we're going to have an interview with some people in our church. Now, this is an interview that I recorded earlier this week, and I want you to see Eric and Carrie Bowen share their story of how God has been at work in their life. So interestingly enough, the detour in life uh, began last year uh, when I quit my job without having a new job lined up. Uh, so at that time, I didn't really understand what was going on, uh, but I couldn't find a, another job within the chemistry field. So I went to Walmart and I took a job there, um, just an hourly type of job. And within six months, I had made supervisor over there as I was completing my degree. So I just completed my degree at Purdue. And so I completed my program there. And a week later, I had been applying to jobs and Amazon called me back and said, hey, we want you as an area manager. So over in Whitestown, I have a job beginning on Monday uh, with uh, essentially the same pay as I was making as a scientist and a huge sign-on bonus and stocks and everything else with the company. So prayer answered because we had been waiting for about a year and we weren't certain, especially with the COVID-19 situation, uh, my previous job had laid off half of its workforce. So by going and taking a job at Walmart and getting supervisory experience, in addition to getting my college degree, boy, talk about Providence right there. That's God right there because he protected me from being laid off and gave us a job at exactly the time when we needed it most right there. So you're saying that if you hadn't gone to Walmart and been a supervisor at Walmart, this Amazon job opportunity probably wouldn't have opened up for you. It definitely would not have. But you weren't happy at Walmart. Well, the thing is, <laughs> the thing is, it's a different style situation than what I had been used to previously. Without the Walmart experience on my resume, I never would have been even considered for this position because my resume previous to this only had scientific experience on it. So talk a little bit more about kind of your emotional and spiritual life during the last year. Oh, um, wow. Did you go through times of doubt? Did you go through times of, of questioning whether God was really caring for you? What, what was that like for you? Absolutely. Yes, uh, we went through a lot of doubt. Uh, we wondered, you know, what God's purpose was for doing all of this. We wondered why we were being made to wait so long. But when this answer came, it was similar to like a situation like Abraham, where he was told, hey, you know, I'll be there for you. You know, I will make you into, you know, a, a nation there. You know, he had plans to prosper us all along, but we couldn't see the final ending of it until recently. So we didn't understand why we were going through what we were going through at the time. And it led us to doubt at that time. You know, and I was mad. I, I think I was mad for a long time and sad about that. I think we had a lot of tears in the car that he probably didn't know about. We were asking ourselves, okay, why is God doing this to us? Why is it that we can't seem to get ahead? Why is it happening to us? And then all of a sudden, this came along, and all the answers became very clear. The hardships are the hardest, but usually that's when you, that's actually usually when he's there, even though you think he's not. There's this passage in Exodus chapter 14, verse 14, that I think is incredibly appropriate for us today and for this entire series that we're doing. It says this, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. One of the problems that we face, especially I think here in America, is this idea that busyness is the answer. That activity is the answer. Especially when we face times of uncertainty or confusion, we want to be in control of what's going on, and we frequently slide into trying to control things by doing more things. But there in the book of Exodus, God is trying to liberate his people from their bondage and slavery and lead them to a place of promise. And he says to them, listen, I'm going to fight for you. You only need to be still. I hope that during this time of self-isolation and whatnot, that you would be able still to embrace the idea that God is in charge and you can let him be in charge. You need only to be still.